This is what nearly 48 hours of catastrophe looks like. As Dorian, the most powerful storm to ever hit the Bahamas, crawled its way through the islands, at times coming to a complete standstill with wind speeds of 180 miles per hour. That's the front part. The water is about six feet. In its wake, utter devastation. At least seven people killed. We can expect more death. As the monster storm now churns north, it is expected to bring flash flooding and a storm surge, leaving millions along the east coast on high alert. This is a very serious storm. Could bring enormous damage to our state. And now new aerials from the Abaco Islands in the Bahamas show a paradise in ruins. My team and I had been on the island with Dorian seemed to sit right on top of us, at one point having to take shelter inside a closet as the storm grew even more violent. We're in a, looks like a, yeah, looks like a utility closet that we moved to. This is uh, producer Chris Donato. As it finally weakened, we were able to leave our building, which as you can see here in this aerial image, it is one of the few in Abaco left standing. The horror began on Sunday when Dorian made landfall as a category five hurricane. Can't even see the house across the street anymore. You can see what it's doing here and off in the distance, those waves crashing against the pier. Wind gusts exceeded 220 miles per hour. So strong, we had to quickly seek shelter inside. Look at that. Those are the wind gusts that we have, that we have seen and that have, officials have warned about. This is absolutely a mind-blowing event that is unfolding right now. The monster storm inched along, at times just a mile an hour. I don't know how well you can see it, but I want you to listen to the wind and the howl of the wind as it goes by. We've seen large pieces of debris flying in the other direction. All right, and it looks like we've just uh, lost power. We're on the third floor, yeah. and the water is pouring through the door. Meanwhile, outside, the furious rain and intense storm surge flooded streets. Uh, this is very deep water. This video shows the water reaching a second floor apartment, sweeping up the stairs and slamming into the window. And in this home, furniture bobbing in the water. Jack Pettit of Kentucky sent us this video from his home in the Bahamas. Look at the roofing going, and I'm worried about the structure next. Look at all the siding torn off of this house. Some residents became trapped. Water is everywhere. Everything is just in ruins. One mother pleaded for prayers on Facebook. Everyone, please pray for us, please. Please, my baby's only four months old. Please pray for us. The roof ripped off of her apartment building. She took shelter with other families. I just don't want a safe place we could be right now. As the eye of the storm moved over the islands, swim, swim, swim. our team witnessed people practically being swept away. They were rescued just in time. They told our ABC affiliate WPLG that they were terrified. But we're happy to be safe. safe. The house was getting flooded um, up to, I don't know, maybe it was up to 10, like five, at least five, six feet. Once it was safe to go outside, our team surveyed the damage. The devastation here is breathtaking. You can see that building behind me. It has collapsed. And look at this yacht on the ground resting up against this condo. Cars littered across the island. Homes reduced to piles of rubble. The Red Cross estimates that more than 13,000 houses have been damaged or destroyed. That is the equivalent of about 45% of all dwellings on Abaco and Grand Bahama. I'm coming. Tim Aylin. Bahamian journalist had to flee photos. his home. He and his daughter waded through chest high water to seek safer ground. This is what the Grand Bahama Airport looked like just a few days ago, and this is what it looks like now. Flying over the island, we surveyed the devastation. In the town of Marsh Harbor, we're with authorities as they go through these destroyed homes looking for both survivors and those lost to Mother Nature. We head to a hospital that has turned into a makeshift shelter. This is the clinic where uh, a lot of the, the injured have uh, been treated, but also there's a lot of family members and just people here just occupying the hallways. Every hallway is full. They have already treated more than 150 people, and they don't know how much longer they can continue to operate. Government officials say there are areas first responders cannot reach. The U.S. Coast Guard has been dispatched to rescue survivors, at least 47 so far. You can see a United States Coast Guard helicopter behind me. 
another military aircraft helicopter. They've been running patients in and out. They've been rescuing from the Abacos. States of emergency have been declared from Florida all the way to Virginia. Tropical storm force winds have begun lashing the East Coast. The storm has now weakened to a Category 2, but its wind field is getting larger. The next couple of hours is going to be the critical time for any of the surge that happens on the East Coast of Florida. ABC News is spread out across the storm zone. Gio Benitez is in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. We're actually on a boat dock right now. It's high tide, but clearly a lot higher than usual. Now we're looking at the possibility of that storm surge meeting this high tide. That's the concern. Flooding is very likely. More than one million people have been ordered to evacuate. It's important that residents heed those calls. Um, you know, get out now while you have time, while there's fuel available. Rob Marciano is in Melbourne Beach, Florida. The center of Dorian now just 100 miles east of us. A tornado warning has been issued for our county. Tornado threats are going to be underway tonight. These winds are only increasing. Earlier today, my colleague Kaylee Hartung was in Jacksonville, Florida, at one of the many staging areas for the National Guard. There are 250 of these multi-purpose vehicles at this staging area. It's not even the largest they have in the state. And these vehicles, they can do everything from transport troops and supplies to perform water rescues in areas other vehicles can't go. We are ready to bring in logistical support, communication support, high water rescue support, um, security force mission support. In Charleston, South Carolina, business owners are bracing for the worst. Keep going on down. Laying sandbags down and boarding up windows. ABC's Megan Tavrizian spent time with Alan Vondel, the co-owner of Tommy Condon's Irish Pub. They're planning to stay open through the hurricane, but taking precautions. Alan, describe how high you think the water's going to be outside uh, of here. I think it's going to get right around here. We're going to have sandbags to about here. We're going to gorilla tape the inside and outside seams of the door and hope for the best. Hospitals in the state are racing to beat the storm, trying to move as many patients as they can to higher ground. This patient is on his way in an ambulance to a Virginia hospital two hours away. We have 10 patients that are confirmed to leave today, and there will be others today. But not everyone is healthy enough to move. David Eason is fighting a serious blood infection and will ride out the storm in his hospital bed. I tell you to pack up and go, go. Yeah. You can. Yeah. yeah. My situation, I can. Back in the Bahamas and those islands in crisis, the scale of this catastrophe is becoming known with each passing hour. Those who call this now unfamiliar place home face a long road to recovery. And our thanks to Marcus Moore and his team for the excellent reporting. Joining us now is ABC News meteorologist Greg Dutra. Greg, we've seen a weakening of this storm, and yet it's still aimed dangerously for the Carolinas. Down from a Category 5 to a Category 2, but we can't let our guards down just yet. The main impacts will be felt from Dorian Wednesday and into Thursday as it rakes very close to the outer banks of North Carolina and precariously close to even Charleston. Even if it doesn't track over land, there's still going to be major effects. And there have been massive evacuations, and yet especially for those low low-lying areas, that could be dangerous. They're not taking any chances. There's a few things working against them. The king tides, which are normal astronomically high tides around this time of year, their low-lying position, and then a couple of Dorian effects, four to seven feet of storm surge coming in, waves on top of that, and then six to ten inches of rainfall. In addition to that, too, it is going to be dangerously close to records for and flooding. We will be keeping a close watch. Thanks, Greg, for that update and for the forecast. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.